Hello everybody. Hope you're doing great and are ready to hear the story of Skaftareldar, the most destructive and influential eruption in Iceland's history. Let's begin with the stats. Skaftareldar began erupting on June 8, 1783 and lasted for eight months until the 7th of February. It first began erupting in Grímsvöð in Vatnjökull, but the first fissures opened here some 65 kilometers southeast of the Grímsvöð volcano. Skaftareldar or Laki were produced by Grímsvöð. It's also possible that there was a lot of continental drift at the time, which allowed magma to rise straight from the mantle and either produced the eruption or helped Grímsvöð produce it. During these eight harsh months, 10 fissures and around 140 craters opened and spanned 27 kilometers. The eruption can be split into 10 episodes. Every episode, a new fissure opened to the northeast of the previous one. These fissures and craters were an old joke. When the fissures were opening, they began with explosive activity for one to three days and were producing up to 8,000 cubic meters of lava per second. Then, longer duration, less explosive lava producing phases followed, often lasting several weeks. The lava flow during those phases averaged at around 1,000 to 3,000 cubic meters per second. That's just crazy. To put that into perspective, the La Palma eruption was averaging around 60 cubic meters per second, and the Geldingadalir was around 8. In the end, the Skaftareldar eruption spread its lava over 600 square kilometers of land, and pumped out 14.7 cubic kilometers of lava. It's classified as a VEI-4 eruption, but as some of you know, the VEI scale doesn't really apply to Icelandic lava flow eruptions. There are also stories of the lava fountains reaching heights of over 1,000 meters. Just think of that. La Palma's lava fountains reached the staggering 500 meters, and that seemed unbelievable. So, as you hear, the Skaftareldar eruption was a giant, and with all that power, it must have had an impact. And sure it did. It was springtime, and Icelanders were excited for the summer. It looked good. Everything was nice, the weather was fine, and sheep could be let loose. In late May, people started feeling earthquakes in the southern and southeastern region. The earthquakes continued and increased in intensity, until on the 8th of June, the seemingly normal summer turned into a nightmare. That same day, 1,000 meter high lava fountains were seen all the way from towns down south, and it started raining acid. Skaftareldar had arrived. On the 11th of June, lava came rushing down Skaftarkljúfur and the river Skaftá dried up. As and tephra emissions came in four phases during the summer, which was the cause of new episodes starting. In the end of July, everything seemed to be calming down. Lava flow slowed down, which had by now destroyed 17 villages. But unfortunately, it was just the calm before the storm. People didn't have to wait long before another huge plume of ash stepped up from the highlands. People had to leave their homes due to ash and tephra. Then, a few days later, lava came rushing down Kvervisfljóts Canyon, or Kvervisfljóts Gljúfur. This continued until the eruption ended in February. Skaftareldar left a scar and temperatures in the northern hemisphere dropped by an average of one degree. This eruption is most likely the cause of the French Revolution, since crops failed and hunger raged throughout Europe due to the decrease in temperature, which probably just put the last nail into the coffin. So, that's Skaftaleldar for you. If you hadn't heard this story before, now you have. When volcanoes like Grímsvöð, Katla and Bárðarbunga erupt outside of the glacier, where the main area is, they always do something dirty. These types of large fish eruptions don't happen anywhere else in the world, 
which is probably for the best. They do the least damage here. On that note, I just want to let you know that if you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comments. I hope you enjoyed, and I also hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.